traditional rockets, 3D printed rockets. Today, we're putting them to the test on the first layer. Hey, welcome to the first layer. My name's Richard. And my name's Brian. And today, we are taking rockets to the field. And what we're doing today is we're testing whether 3D printed rockets can hold up to the rigors of what a traditional rocket will do. We've 3D printed this rocket right here. It's fully 3D printed from nose cone to tail. The other one that I'm holding in my hand, which uh, came from our good friends over at PM Hobbycraft, or a lot of the components on it. Um, this one is a traditional cardboard tube, plastic nose cone, wooden fins, the whole nine yards. So this would be a typical kit you might find uh, at PM Hobbycraft or any other rocket retailer online. Now this one here was fully 3D printed by Richard and what we've also done is thanks to Solarbotics we have designed our own altimeter to go within the nose cone of these models. So we're going to be measuring the pitch, the roll, the altitude, the temperature, all sorts of fun data and in addition we actually have a camera mounted to some of the fuselages so you'll be able to see what the rocket sees on all the way up. You want the dog one? So let's get launching. So first up today we have a traditional uh, rocket for lack of a better term this rocket is built from your traditional materials plywood fins cardboard tubes uh, a cardboard tube and plywood centering rings as well as a plastic nose cone it has a 30 inch nylon parachute with a nomex wad protector or chute protector so when the ejection charge goes off it will not burn our chute we're going to launch this one first Five. Four, three, two, one. All right, so our next rocket here is from Solarbotics. It's primarily 3D printed with the exception of our cardboard tube here. So we've 3D printed the cone, we've 3D printed uh, the engine mounts, we've 3D printed the fins, it's all 3D printed here. Now Solarbotics provided us the electronics to design an altimeter which sits within our nose cone, and we also have a camera attached to the outside for this launch. So let's give it a go. <laughs> So now we're going to launch our fully 3D printed rocket and we've got PM Hobbycraft's name on it and Solarbotics because they helped us quite a bit in getting these rockets ready for this launch. Now the reason that we did this launch was to see how 3D printing performed against traditional rockets or maybe even a composite rocket. And we have to say that we're going to find out exactly how this one performs. So what we have here is a 3D printed nose cone which holds an altimeter, which was provided by our friends at Solarbotics. Now, the body, the whole tube is also 3D printed in two parts. We have 3D printed fins, the engine mount, the boat tail, and the engine retainer are all 3D printed, as well as the launch lug that we have here. This launch lug we did not design. Nope, we didn't. No. No, nope. we're, we're not that smart. <laughs> we got this one off of Thingiverse, and this is the same one that's on all three of the rockets. However, the rocket itself started out as a rocket from Apogee Components, uh, and it was in their one of their magazines, uh, Peak of Flight, and this was originally called the Ragnar rocket. It had some additional fins. We ran into some problems with printing those fins, 
So we left them out on all the rockets and we made them all the same. Other than that, now it's time to get this thing on the launch pad and get it up in the air and see how it does. Will we, will we be three for three today? Stay tuned. So thanks to Solarbotics for providing the electronics for this, I've designed a miniature altimeter uh, designed to fit within our nose cone. And what it involves is a BMP388 temperature pressure sensor, along with an MPU6050 six axis accelerometer. We also have a nice little screen on the side here. And this will tell us if we can actually see it, we can get various analytic data to make sure that we're fully calibrated before launching. It's all connected underneath this electrical tape, this nice little hookup here, to a ESP8266 with Wi-Fi capabilities and a LiPo charger. We also have a little buzzer active, so as soon as we start data logging, it will beep, and it helps us find the rocket after we've lost it. Now, this is absolutely amazing because for, I wanna say about 25 to $30 in components, we've designed a very high-tech high-speed data logger, which you normally would have to buy over the counter for about $150 to $200. So today we're going to go and see if we can get some accurate measurements off this. Put that right in there, just like that. Take a little bit of extra there, just toss it up in there. Now we just got to fit our nose cone on. There we go. I want to launch it. You're going to. Now what we have to do is put it up on our launch pad. What we're going to do here is we're going to wrap that through there. Why? Because this will allow us to make sure that it's going. Nice day, at least, eh? Yeah, last one. Okay. Yeah, last one. yeah, that's it for the week, guys. So we're going to turn on the key, okay, so we're going to, we got to tell people that the launcher is hot, so your launcher hot, launcher hot, and we're going to flip that up, and turn that on, launcher armed, wait, wait, launcher armed, sky clear, range clear, now we get it, launcher armed, launcher armed, Sky clear. Sky clear. Range clear. Range clear. Now count it down. One, four, three, two, one. Hit the button. Didn't hit it hard enough. Where did it go? There it goes. Oh, nice. Parachute. Coming right to us. Look it out. Oh no! We will uh hanging artifacts. We will put one of guards out in the tree. Well, we had a pretty successful day. I would say so. We came fairly close. The altimeter held up. Now our camera out of all things did not. And that was due to our third launch having such a high arc. It basically, as it came down, our chute popped a little late. And as a result, the G-force was enough to disconnect the camera from two neodymium magnets. So the key here to understand is when you're designing rockets, make sure it's going to handle heavy G changes. If you're going to have PLA in there, it might wobble a little bit. Now this was heat resistant PLA and it held up better. 
but we still recommend PET-G. And as you can see, the actual piece of the rocket itself held in fine, but in the end, gravity simply overcame our camera. So maybe in six to eight months, we'll find that camera and we'll be able to provide that extra footage for you guys. Maybe after the snow flies. But first, we got a lot of people to thank. And first, we want to thank Brian Jackson, who is the president of the Airdrie Space Science Club and provided the area for us to fly today. And we flew under Brian's uh, membership to CAR. Tell us a little bit about what CAR is. CAR, the Canadian Association of Rocketry, is, is the group that kind of promotes and, and uh, gets everybody doing all kinds of rockets from the models that uh, we fly uh, with our club to the mid-power things that you guys flew to the high altitude. So they're kind of the governing body. They lay down the ground rules, they provide the insurance, um, and so as a member of the Canadian Association of Rocketry, you get access to all of their resources. And how can somebody get in touch with you uh, to become part of your club? We are, we, the Airdrie Space Science Club can be found on Facebook, but we're also available at airdrierockets at gmail.com. There you go. So if you're in the Calgary area or in the Airdrie area and you want to be a part of a rocket club or just see some real cool stuff going on, check out the Airdrie Science Space Club and check out their calendar for when they're going to be launching later this year and into next year. Now, there's a few people we have to thank other than the Airdrie Space Science Club. We've got to thank Sunward Hobbies, who provided us our shoots of great quality. They uh, worked amazingly well. They were sewn well. They also provided us with the uh, Nomex wad protectors, which helped the heat of the discharge not melt our parachutes. I also want to thank Solarbotics again for providing all the electronic components. Now Solarbotics is out of Calgary and they have all sorts of Arduino components, electrical components, and they've now bought Active Tech. So now they have all sorts of different electronic components using the commercial space. Now I've been going to Solarbotics for 10 years and if I need something same day, they've generally got it there. So check them out at solarbotics.com located just around 40th Street Northeast up by the airport. Also we want to thank PM Hobbycraft for supplying some of the materials that we needed in our traditional rocket and that one flew tremendously well and uh, did a really great job. I also want to thank Garth, our mentor, our Yoda, our uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, for getting us into rocketry again. Our confidence shaker as we say <laughs> as he shakes his head every time with these things. Every time he sees a rocket that we design he just goes, is that going to fly? <laughs> We set the bar low for him. <laughs> we want to thank Apogee Components as well. You can find Apogee Components if you're looking for rocketry supplies in the U.S. or across the world. They ship anywhere and uh, fast shipping as well. Uh, they helped us out with the rock sim and that's how we did all our simulations before we brought the real thing out to the field to fly it for a day. Uh, who else do we got to thank? You are fans. Thank you for watching. <laughs> exactly. Much appreciated. We also want to thank KKP Printing for these wonderful shirts, which you will be able to find on our shopthefirstlayer.com website very soon. They'll be available for you to purchase. If you want to see our 2020 uh, rocket launch t-shirt, this will be a limited run. So uh, you want to get yours, you want to get them fast and you want to get them soon. That's it, that's all I got. Okay. Okay, well, we'll, we'll cut into a... <laughs> yeah, we'll cut into a, to the end. So if you're interested in rocketry, check out the links that we've got down in the description below where you can buy products, where you can get a hold of different clubs, and where you might be able to uh, fly your rockets no matter where you are in the world. We'll put some links down below so we can get you all fixed up. If you're interested, we uh, also use filaments from filaments.ca to print all of our 3D printed components and that was their pet G line so go ahead and check them out at filaments.ca today. All the links down below. With that said we're out of here. Launches are over. We're taking home all of our rockets today. Right? Who would have Well guessed? except and for one. And now we got to hibernate and prepare for the upcoming winter. Yes. <laughs> We've got one still stuck in a tree but we'll get that out later. That's for spring, that's for spring. Until meantime, print some more rockets and remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.